Modern football is a complicated economic cycle that helps the clubs stay afloat. The divide between big and small clubs is widening and is probably in its most visible state ever. The likes of FC Barcelona, Real Madrid, Liverpool, etc. are at the epitome of this economic pyramid. They get a desired share in the TV rights money, have lucrative sponsorship agreements and a global brand that fuels their heavyweight ambitions. Some smaller clubs have adapted to this very well. They are known as feeder clubs. They find and nurture talented individuals until they are ready to ply their trade in the big leagues. Once they are ready, the feeder clubs cash in on them. Soccer Spective brings to you the top 5 feeder clubs in Europe and we won't be talking about the likes of Barcelona B. So this is going to be interesting. A simple Google search about what Benfica's squad would be if they had not sold anyone would blow your mind. The Portuguese giants are not a small club by any means. They have won the Premier League 37 times, the most by any club. Still, just like the other two of the three Portuguese bigwigs, Benfica must sell to survive. They have made big money sales like Yao Felix to Atletico for 127 million. Ruben Diaz to Manchester City for 68 million and Luka Jovic to Frankfurt for 22 million to name a few. Benfica have great relations with the likes of Chelsea and a bunch of big Spanish clubs. This helps them get good business window after window. The club has become a gateway to Europe for players from South America who don't have to worry about learning a new language and have the potential to move on to the big boys in Europe. Shakhtar Donetsk is more of a story than a football club. Owned by a fairly rich man, they have climbed past Dynamo Kiev with the power of money and outstanding performances. Just like Benfica, Shakhtar is a door to the European dream for South American footballers, but specifically Brazilians. If you have watched Shakhtar play, you cannot miss the samba in their style of play. The club plays very similar to the Brazilian national team because most, if not all of its key players are from Brazil. Over the years, Shakhtar has produced the like of Fernandino, Douglas Costa, Alex Taxiera and Fred, to name a few. The Ukrainian civil war has pushed the club outside Donetsk without a permanent home, playing across the country for a while. Adding to this is a change in management, which is making talented Brazilians skeptical about a move to Shakhtar. Despite this, Shakhtar has been formidable in Europe and a very important talent feeder for the big clubs. Probably the most interesting inclusion in this list and one of the best in this business, RB Salzburg has mastered the trade of being a feeder club. This club has become a serious feeder of talent to the Bundesliga. Maybe you know Red Bull Salzburg only because of Erling Haaland. But they have produced the likes of Nabi Keita, Valentino Lazaro, Deir Topomecano, Sadio Mane, Peter Gulaxi, and a lot more. Salzburg's biggest advantage is utilizing the Red Bull network. They can easily get their hands on the best talent from Ghana and the US and then nurture them to be fit for the Bundesliga or other top leagues. RB Leipzig, in which RB doesn't stand for Red Bull but is owned by Red Bull, uses Salzburg almost like a youth academy they can feed off. This has helped the Leipzig club compete with the likes of Bayern and Dortmund right after getting promoted to the top flight. RB Salzburg are the new age feeder club and a probable threat to the traditional transfer balance in European football. If the word Ajax doesn't remind you of that semi-final run in the 2018-19 Champions League, then please start watching football. The second leg ended in a heart-breaking loss for the Amsterdam side. But it did show Europe what feeder clubs can pull off every now and then. Porto went all the way with Mourinho and Ajax could have done the same. But the system doesn't let them build on these performances. Or they just don't want to. They are more comfortable in showing up once in five seasons and thrashing the likes of Real Madrid at Bernabeu. Ajax have been a true talent factory and probably the oldest one in Europe. 
they don't have to work hard to dominate the Eredivisie because they generally possess a young and dynamic squad. Ajax has produced the likes of Luis Suarez, Latan Ibrahimovic, Frankie De Jong, Hakim Ziyech and Matthias Delit to name a few from a very long list. Ajax are the old school feeder club, sometimes just a supermarket for top talent from northern Europe. Many would argue that Dortmund in no way is a feeder club but you need to watch the rest of the video to understand why they are Dortmund have been the second best club in the German Bundesliga for the past 50 years behind Bayern Munich while Bayern has won 24 titles marching on towards their 25th Dortmund has only managed eight successful players from Dortmund make the journey to Munich or other big wigs in Europe For the last two decades, this has been a consistent trend for Dortmund. Obama Yang left for Arsenal. Gotze, Lewandowski, Matt Hummels, and many more for Bayern. Dortmund acts as a stepping stone and not the destination for big talents, despite being a European heavyweight. Erling Haaland, Jadon Sancho, and Jude Bellingham in the near future will all leave for big clubs. Thus, Dortmund is probably the most high-profile feeder club in Europe. and one that does its job extremely well some honorable mentions are fc porto sporting lisbon dinamo zagreb and atlanta bc if you like this video make sure to like share it with your friends and subscribe to soccer spectre thank you for watching